This is our special public affairs program on Sky Cable and hosted here by Foundation University. And I'm talking to a multi-awarded photojournalist, Eli, Eli Reed. And Eli, yeah. how do you define satisfaction? Then we talk about your craft, but I'd like to segue to that. When you do your work and you take a look afterwards, the things that you have done, then you say, this is good. What is satisfaction to you? I think early I, I wanted to see. I wanted to see what was going on uh, with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my way of doing research sometimes is to go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing that's most satisfactory to me is that if I take on something and I, I get rid of the ego that gets in the way. Mm, because it does get in the way? It can get in the way very easily. You think you're, you think you're oh yeah, I got this figured out. Or Did or, you experience that? That one time does. in your life your ego was bigger than No one would ever notice else? it because it was like, I get rid of it very fast. Okay. Because <laughs> uh -huh. um, it gets in the way of seeing. You know, you, if you already decide this is going on and it's not going on, you're already in, deep in trouble. But uh, if I'm able to go someplace and do some pictures or something, write something or say something that impacts in some kind of way that impacts on the way things will go, then that is a feeling of satisfaction. And you don't get it then. You may get it later when you find out what's gone down after you left the premises. Mm -hmm. You know. So, um, and that's happened. I've been very fortunate. I've been able to work on some things that have a big, you know, impact. There's a from the time I worked in the, in the newspapers, mm -hmm. it's things that change people's lives because uh, you know you work with people that that you know they're doing a job, but their job is to inform the public, right? You know that's the thing. You're you're a mm -hmm. communicator, and, uh, and and really change a lot of stuff going on. And then later on, after that, still there's opportunities and you can't walk away it, from yeah. them. It never really changes. It doesn't change. Until they put you away, <laughs> permanently. <laughs> and life is too short to yeah. even be thinking of other things than that. Right. So, is there someone in your life that really influenced you most? Yeah. Well, I guess uh, my mother definitely, and my mother and father are very kind people, and believed in me. Mm -hmm. So that 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 makes a big difference because even if you run into situations or people who are trying to tell you you're no good or this you can't do this you can't do that. It's so much fun doing what they say you can't do. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, that I is mean, how young people rebel when, you yeah. know, when you're told you're going to do it. Yeah. And I was not, But your parents were saying that you can't. No, they were, they were great. I'm thinking about afterwards. You know, when you have real support, you know, mm -hmm. and then you go into the real world and, and you get all this other kind of stuff. But, you know, it's, um, I think also it helped that I worked while I was going to school, you know, um, art school. I, went to, I worked in the hospital. And saw people at their worst, at their best, and you know you've seen them. Yeah, you have, an, you have some input, and you know you work with people that are dedicated to you know, doing what they're they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a mix of a lot of things. It's okay. not it's not a, it's not a, a sprint. It's a okay. it's like a marathon. All right. So let's uh, let's go to your craft. Um, I was reading. Uh, something about you not having really formal training in photojournalism. Is that right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I, um, I, fortunately, a mentor is very important. Okay. You may not know it at the time, but it's very important. I ran into somebody on the streets of New York. Uh, he saw I had a camera, a Nikon camera, and I had... What was uh, your first camera? Well, the first camera was actually a Kodak Instamatic 104. Oh, really? <laughs> and two weeks after, I bought a Shika Mat, a twin lens reflex, because I was trying to take time exposures of the moon with that little Instamatic, which was not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So then after that, um, I got a Shika TL Super. And then the first professional quality camera uh, I got was a Nikon. And I, I borrowed money from my doctor, who gave me the money so I could buy this camera, this lens. And I repaid him, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was the first uh, professional auto camera I had. And then it was learning how to use the damn thing. You know, it's like you have to, like anything else, you have to work with it. And I read as much information as I can get. Mm -hmm. And when I ran into this guy, Donald Greenhouse, on the streets of New York, he uh, saw I had uh, contact sheets I was looking at, some pictures I'd taken, and a camera. He's, he started talking to me. He says, you want to see some pictures? So I said, sure. So I went with him to the studio, and I saw his work that was mind-blowing. I mean, really powerful, that meant something. All right. What and was the theme of his work? It was a nursing home that he had done this photo essay on. Okay. At the Greenwich, uh, I think it was a Greenwich Village nursing home. And it just 
showing people respect where they're going to their next place in life and with, with a lot of passion and, and uh, just concern. And it actually, that picture story I saw that he did was, was run with uh, Walter Conkright, ran it on CBS at one point. It was so powerful, it was so moving. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably my first connection with understanding what multimedia can be mm -hmm. to, to do that. And how powerful it is. How powerful it can be when, when it's used properly, you know, mm -hmm. by people who are really, really mean to do something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that impact on how you, where you're going to go to, but I think running it to Donald, you know. Was one of those things. Yes, and he. he and then through the years, you, how did you hone your craft? I mean, here's the, the here's a creative talent, here's the instrument, and somehow you connect those two and come up with a wonderful product. So how did that come about? A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> I'm there's, sure. There's no easy way about about it, depending what, I mean, my, the people I looked up to were uh, like W. E. Gene Smith, Donna mm -hmm. McCullen, mm -hmm. uh, Philip Jones Griffith doing that Vietnam War, people who were doing really powerful work all the time. And the great painters in life. Uh, Cezanne was an impressionist mm -hmm. painter, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first book I ever read about an artist. And he, uh, he had a rough life, but he kept painting. He kept on working at it. So there's no, there's no easy way around it. I would spend, like, I'd make 100 prints, 100 different pictures in one night. A hundred. Uh, yeah, different pictures, learning how to print. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, when I was working at the hospital, when I realized after I got out of art school that I wanted to be a photographer, not just a photographer, I wanted to be a, a photographer that, that did something, I worked um, for six years, 20 hour days. You know? Wow. Because I had, no, and it didn't, at the time, I didn't think about it as, as oh, being difficult, it's just something I had to do, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Because you love what you did. Yeah, I, not only I, I, I was hungry for it, I was, you know, I was going to go. I mean, it's funny because at one point I was thinking about volunteering, well, trying to figure out a way to get to uh, Vietnam because I wanted to, to see with my, my own eyes what was going on. And my, my mentor kept thinking of things to keep me out, <laughs> keep me <laughs> off that plane from going there. Okay. Because he knew I wasn't ready for that yet, right. you know? So it's, it's like, it's, it's never, it never ends though. I mean, I have a lot of books on my uh, iPad, you know, things to be read, some things I dip in, they go out. Mm -hmm. There's so much information out there. We, we, the the uh, young people today don't know how lucky they are. We True. get the information, but you have to go do it. You can't just plan it out and read it. You have to go do it. You know, I think one of the most powerful reasons why we're here and I'm talking to you mm -hmm. is that Dumagati is a university community. A lot of students are here and, and somehow listening to you, mm -hmm. somehow inspires me. I, I'm a teacher myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I am pretty sure those who are looking at us right now mm -hmm. will look at their craft and take a look at how they can do it more meaningfully, you know, especially as you said, the young people are luckier now. We have iPads, we, mm -hmm. we can do research. At your time, you have to do your own mixing of chemicals in order to come out <laughs> with the best picture. Digital was not there, oh. but now it is here. You can do almost anything you want to. Uh, Francisco Capola, the great filmmaker, did the, the um, what do you Francis call Francisco Capola. Yeah, Francisco Capola. He did, a, he, did a, he was working with some things with video a long time ago. He said, some little girl from the Midwest that no one's ever heard of is gonna come out of nowhere and it's going to make something significant because of the technical things that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like you, you, can't, um, you can't pity yourself because of stuff is going on. Um, it's like no prisoners starting with yourself, you know, if you want it. And you still have to be a human being. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I mean, now I came from a Delaney Homes housing project. All the, my guys that, I, that were my best friends were all the guys that were in trouble. Mm -hmm. I was not. I was into painting, I was into writing, mm -hmm. you know, reading and, and everything I get my hands on. But we played stickball together. <laughs> so we, that was our common bond. Mm -hmm. And these guys were in trouble, but I never had a problem with them. And I think they didn't have a problem with me because I didn't join, I didn't uh, judge them. Yeah, you didn't, I didn't judge. I, and that's helped the thing a lot of times because there's reasons why people come from this. Every one of them had a sensitive side, but oh, they weren't. Well, they, all of us have the sensitive yeah, side. But they weren't allowed to show their sensitive sides. <laughs> they were supposed to be the troublemakers. All right. So. There are questions that we will entertain. Um, some of these questions have something to do with your craft. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at something that you'd like to to immortalize, an image that you would like to immortalize through the lens of the camera. What's mm -hmm. going on inside your mind? Stop thinking. Stop. Really? I said, stop. I mean, if you're thinking, you're missing something. 
-hmm. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you, we do things like breathe in the air, right? Uh -huh. That's sort of an automatic thing. You can do the same thing when you see something that's amazing. The thing that you should know is that get in position. Try to get to the place close enough where the picture can take you. You know, and, and a lot of times it's not a lot of uh, necessarily shooting a lot of pictures to do it. I mean, you get you, you, you identify something, and you just your consciousness consciousness says go there, go. move forward, whether you're in a trance or what. Don't get hurt, but move forward, <laughs> and then the picture will get close enough. To, it'll take you because it's like, and it may just be one frame. Okay. I, I mean, there's been a lot of times on pictures that I've that I've really liked that were just important. one frame. One frame. Now that will probably, if you can expound on this, there is a question uh, from one of our viewers uh, here in the studio. This is probably a segue of what you were hmm. telling me. On average, how many warm-up shots does it take? <laughs> warm-up <laughs> shots to get a good picture, and this coming from Anna Kuzman. Okay, the warm-up shot comes when you open your eyes in the morning. <laughs> no, that is a warm-up shot. I mean, I'm looking uh, immediately, even though I'm not, I'm not conscious about I'm sorry. it. That's right. That's uh, all right. That's it. But I am. Thank you. I am looking at the light, even when I'm not thinking about looking at the light. I'm looking at the light. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at where I'm at, trying to remember where I'm at, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that's the warm-up. That's the warm-up for me. That I will wake up, stand up, get out of bed, take a shower, and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working from the minute I wake up. But it's not really work. It's like called living your life, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and living your life uh, when you wake up is what? It's a wonderful I'm, experience because I'm awake. I'm alive, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. uh, it's like it's so every day is a is a new day, and an, it's an interesting day. And yeah. As you gear yourself up for something interesting. If you're breathing, then you're you're warmed up. You're warmed up, and you know it's like. I mean, so, so the older you get, maybe it's part of the thing. There's some people that are much younger understand it a lot quicker, but you don't worry about it. I mean, you want to do, like if you're working for somebody, you want to do the best job you can do. Okay. But now you've had a certain amount of experience, you know what the limits of your possibility are, or you know, all that kind of thing that goes in there. So you just proceed, you proceed and you don't stop and argue with people. You <laughs> move around. I mean, I once went, say, about an hour and a half, two hours, uh, flying to the jungle to get the place. Another about 50 minutes to drive on a bumpy jeep to the mm -hmm. place. And they say you have 20 minutes. Sure. Never even occurred to me to even question that. Just get out of the damn jeep and go start working. Okay. And I got a lot of good pictures from that. That little space of time. You know, I mean, it's well, it's a wonderful testimony. Huh? That's what you're supposed to do. I mean, that's what you're supposed to, you know, look into yourself. If you're having a problem with that, then you probably have something else in your mind that you shouldn't have in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's why I look at it anyway. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we will be asking our guest, uh, what is the most dangerous assignment that he had? And he's going to tell you when we come back.